Welcome back to the Budgeteers and welcome to Taiwan. Coming up in this mini series, we explore Taipei in all of its colorful and fragrant splendor. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm in my happy place. And as a typhoon heads our way, we escape into a wilder part of the country to discover something that will blow you away. Can you believe this is Taiwan? Yes, we cannot wait to show you over the next few weeks what this little unassuming island has to offer. And hopefully this series will change your mind about what this island is all about. And put it on the map as your next budget travel destination. Exactly, Damien. Now do me a favor and roll that bloody intro. downtown Taipei and uh, I, I was actually gonna film the entire process of getting out of the plane and getting into downtown because I heard it was actually quite complicated but it was really straightforward and this is Taipei City Mall station which is where I basically got off the uh, train from the airport and right behind me over there is the hostel so I'm gonna go in and uh, hopefully be able to see Damien for the first time uh, which is really exciting I feel like I'm on an awkward Tinder date or something. I'm gonna go meet someone that I've never met before. <laughs> uh, but look, check this out, this is the hostel. Yeah, we chose this because it's right in the middle of downtown. Um, easy to get to from the airport and uh, they've got a bar, so that's always good. Look who I can see. Oh, it's electric. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what up, brother? Hey, man. Somebody come. Oh. Somebody come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ni hao, ni hao, ni hao. Give me your huggies. What beer do they have on draft? That looks good. Uh, How are you feeling? Breakfast. <laughs> I I Can I have some breakfast too? <laughs> Can I have one of these, please? Okay. Thank you. Wow, it's got air con in here and everything. They're expensive though. Oh, are they? Okay. Good health. And here's to a safe trip. Oh, that is lovely. What is that? I just asked for the time. Floating light. So hard to see. Yeah, it was so great to finally meet Damien, and we spent the first hour just catching up and getting to know each other. But yeah, after a day's worth of traveling, it wasn't long until our bellies started to rumble. So we made our way into the neon tainted streets of Taipei on the hunt for a local street food supper. Thank you, Nat. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> Don't drink too much, okay? Clue. Do you, do, you, do you smell it? Is that the stinky tofu? That's a stinky tofu. Okay. Wow, look how fabulous that looks. Wow. 
I could order some food where we could sit and we have some beers at the same time. Okay. Peanut ice cream roll. Get in my belly. <laughs> Damien starving and so am I, so we just thought, let's just get something. I've actually accidentally got some chicken feet and snail salad. <laughs> okay, a little bit, yeah. Oh, chicken feet. And then what are you going for here? Uh, just for some milk tea, because you know, milk tea just like, sure. defines Taiwan for me, but nobody's here. So. Can we have some milk tea? Hi, Hi. hello, hello. Can I have some uh, bubble, bubble milk tea? <laughs> and this is what I love about traveling the most, is that first impressions that first evening when you're out exploring all the new foods, yeah. all of the new smells, and all of the new friends. Yeah. Oh, that is cool, do that again. Look at this, oh, it looks like a snake. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay? Okay, thank you. This is like a threesome between a squid, a shrimp, and a pork. <laughs> So, the cool part about 7-Eleven Family Marts here in Taipei is that you can just order your food, grab some beers, and just sit outside, and have a nice time. <laughs> I'll get the beers, Damien. Uh, cool. Do you want a local one? Yeah, local one. Okay. Cheers. Oh, I missed this place. Yes, last time I was here, I fell in love with Taiwan. So when Petty invited me to come along on this last minute adventure, I immediately said yes. And I was excited to explore much more of the island on this trip. So after our late night dinner and a walk around the city, we just decided to call it a night because we wanted to be full of energy to enjoy tomorrow, our first proper full day in Taiwan together. and welcome to the first proper day here in Taipei. Last night was really good fun. Obviously, I don't know Damien. I've never met him before. This is our first trip together. Um, and it was really nice to meet him, get to know him. It's really good because basically we just enjoy the same things. We, we both like good food, uh, cold, cheap beer, and just, yeah, like, enjoying being young and healthy and uh, fortunate enough to come to a place like Taipei. Good morning, you handsome man. Good morning. What are you doing? I'm ordering cappuccino from this what is it it's a robot machine <laughs> let's see how it works cappuccino uh, some Chinese characters uh, what's happening what change the language to English here here oh. you sure is the only one flashing? Oh yeah, okay. And now what? Scan the QR code at the Aimbot machine. Oh, okay. Here. This is very overcomplicated. This is like... <laughs> I just want a coffee! I just want a coffee. God damn it! Can I talk to the manager? Oh, that's right! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> no way! Ooh. Going for the syrup. No way, that's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> hey buddy. Oh, he's waving at us. <laughs> Not a drop spilled. Come on, don't mess it up, don't mess it up, don't mess it up. Whee! Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> How is it? It's perfect. Wow, what an experience. 
It's a lot of fuss for, for just one cappuccino though, but... Yeah, it might have been a lot of fuss, but we really needed the caffeine boost as jet lag was hitting us really hard. We made our way on the local underground and headed towards the very center to see what we could find. However, upon getting back to street level, the weather had flipped 180 and it was pissing down rain and blowing a gale. A little bit wet. We had no option to just try our best to get shelter from the bad weather and we ducked into a cheap noodle place to help boost our morale. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. It's actually perfect on a rainy afternoon. Spicy hot soup. I need some soup, yeah. I yeah. really need some soup. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. The rain was relentless for the rest of our first day, but it did look like it might clear up, so we headed over to meet a friend of mine who teaches here in Taipei. This is Alex. He's a cool dude from Canada with a dry sense of humor and plenty of experience of cool places to check out. It's a typhoon or something happening. Winds, have you seen the radar for it? It's mental. It's like this massive thing that's like also hitting Japan. Like we're still, we're having the same storm they are. Okay. I might not have to work tomorrow. And as the weather brightened up in the afternoon, we headed over to a place that Alex said we had to check out. We are coming to, which is quite possibly one of the most popular things to do in Taipei. Right. Elephant Hill, right? Elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant Mountain. <laughs> Damien, you've been here before. Yeah. It's a nice viewpoint, right? Yep. Perfect place for sunset. We have seen a lot of people in sportwear, so we probably won't be alone on this uh, summit. Yeah. Time needs to take hiking so f Seriously, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. better prefer for a typhoon, you never know. I know, each one's like a walking advertisement for Under Armour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're looking for the start of the trail? Look for the big crowd. Base camp, Elephant Hill. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, it says about 15 minutes, 400 meters to the top. We can do that. Easy. It's a good job Damien's got these bad boys. <laughs> I love isolated mountains like this. You're just exploring the jungle on your own. <laughs> We've emerged as a viewpoint. So that's the first viewpoint. I think a lot of people will probably just stay here, so we're going to keep going up, try and get a better view. Wow. You guys are looking for a quick little quiet getaway just outside the city. Eventually, we made it to the highest point, and even though it was also completely overrun, we just decided to commandeer a little spot and soak up the views. It was pretty steep, so bring water like we did, and if you're extra savvy, bring some beers. It will be really worth the extra effort, we guarantee it. And once the stunning Taipei skyline had finished transitioning from a moody afternoon to a striking neon light sky, we made our way back down the steps towards some street food. However, on the way down, we could hear the sweet sound of a smartly dressed Taiwanese man singing soft karaoke on the side of the mountain pass. After resting and listening to this hero singing away, he actually kindly invited us up to join him, and we could not resist. Be free, dude. 
wish you hadn't chosen the past. I'll, I'll, I'll change your song. The whispers <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> your voice is warm and tender. A love that I cannot forsake. <laughs> not forsake. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ruining it. <laughs> By your side, cause I'm your lady, <laughs> wow. and you are my man, <laughs> whenever you reach for me, <laughs> I'll do Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Elephant Hill, Taipei. We are the Budgeteers. When the night has come, and the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid. Oh, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. And darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. <laughs> oh, Lord, in Taipei, stand by me. afternoon here in Taipei. That archway is next level. Right. One of the questions that you ask yourselves when you come to Taiwan, like I did and Damien did when he first came here, is like what country am I what country am I coming to? Am I coming to China? Is Taiwan a country? Is it not? And we're not gonna get too political obviously, but it's an interesting question to know and Damien knows a little bit more than me. Um, and he's been explaining a little bit. So Damien, just, you know, in your own words, like, because it is important, you, like it, he's been telling me, it's important to know because you don't want to offend the locals and you kind of w start to get a better understanding of what you're seeing around you when you understand what is Taiwan at the moment. So where does this story start, basically? This is not a history channel. We're not, I'm not an expert in Chinese history or whatever. But the quickest way I can put it is there are two governments right now that claim to be the real China. Why is that? Because in the 50s, the civil war in China, the Chinese civil war between the communists and the nationalists ended. The nationalists, they lost, and they, their government fled to Taiwan. The leader of their government was called Chiang Kai-shek. And at the moment, we are at the Chiang Kai-shek memorial. So let me tell you something more about that guy. So let's go check out the memorial. We made our way over to the memorial, which by the way is completely free to walk around and it's absolutely stunning. And Damien told me more about the history of this man and his huge significance to the Taiwanese people. So yeah, like I said, there was a civil war and the Republic of China lost and retreated to the island of Taiwan. So the leader Chiang Kai-shek who lost took his government with him as well. Whilst the leader of the victorious Communist Party, Mao Zedong, instituted a new government in mainland China under the new name, the People's Republic of China. 
The reason that the names of both governments are so similar is thanks to the fact that both of them claim to be the legitimate and only China. Current People's Republic of China sees Taiwan as a part of their territory, but Taiwan sees the People's Republic of China as an illegal state occupying their former territory. So even though the occupation of China is still to this day disputed and highly controversial, it is comforting to know that this current standoff is peaceful and the Chinese are welcomed in Taiwan as tourists and visitors without trouble. But one small piece of advice, don't call people in Taiwan Chinese, just call them Taiwanese. Just know that Chiang Kai-shek is a very significant person and this memorial site is highly important to the local Taiwanese. So come here and check it out and learn more about what happened here. And during our walk around the museum, we could see that a lot of people were checking their phones and leaving. Apparently, the typhoon that was swirling around the South China Sea, which had originally been on course to hit north in Japan, had apparently turned west and was due to smash into Taipei in less than 24 hours. So we decided to join the mass exodus, but not before recapping this super important landmark. So, thank you Damien for giving us a little bit of uh, historical information. It is a bit of a mess, isn't it? It is. Like, to answer the question we started with, uh, you know, is it China, is it not China? It's complicated. Yeah, that's the only answer we got for you. Yeah, it's if like they were on Facebook, the relationship status would be, it's complicated. You need some basic knowledge about this place. You don't need to necessarily know everything, but you need to know a little bit about the history to understand the people and their culture. And, and what's going on. And, and what's yeah. going on and stuff like that. And what's going on right now, there's a typhoon behind us, so <laughs> we need to get the hell out of here. Look over here, it's like a really nice sunny day. Um, but the typhoon is right behind us coming and uh, it's nice because it's super hot and humid um, But it's raining guys look and the typhoons come in <laughs> <Run! laughs> Okay, we didn't have to run just yet, but things were getting worse Later that evening we met up with Alex again and took shelter in a local flower market However, the approaching weather was causing them to pack up early, so I told the guys to go to this really beautiful temple, which in my opinion is totally worth a visit. Welcome to Longshang Temple. It's over 300 years old and has a wonderful mix of different faiths with Taoist, Buddhist and Confucian elements. Taiwan prides itself on its inclusive attitude towards religion and Longshang Temple is the perfect example. And for that reason, even in bad weather, it's always busy and tonight seemed no exception. There's like a typhoon rolling in and here you never know if it's gonna stay or blow into the sea. I feel bad for these guys, we had such great plans, but I picked them up at Dom Park um, and we took shelter in the Jade Market um, and that was kind of cool, but they were packing up and it was getting kind of lame. So we came here to, to Longshan Temple and you, Damien, have already been here before yes. in your yes. travels and he's been telling me some stuff um, that I had no idea about. Yeah. Um, so can you tell, tell us a little bit about this place? So, uh, I was here last year, I was here for two weeks, and I visited Longshang Temple multiple times. And they have like different deities here that they pray to. So the way they pray to them is first, they take three sticks of incense, they tr bow three times, put it on their forehead. Then they, you can see that their lips are moving because they're introducing themselves to these deities. And after they introduce themselves, they, they take these wooden blocks, like a half moon kind of. They throw it on the floor, and they ask a question to the gods after introducing themselves if they can ask for a favor or a question. So, so it depends how they're oriented or this, something, Yeah, it right? depends on how the blocks are oriented. If it's a yes, if the gods say yes, you may ask a question or no. So basically, it's like it takes a few steps for 
these people here to even ask for a favor to God. I like that. I like that there's this whole process you have to go yeah, through yeah. to get an answer. <laughs> That's the cool part about traveling, that you go somewhere else and learn these completely different traditions and cultures that you would have never known if you just stayed home and played Fortnite. <laughs> For example. Hey, true. don't hate on Fortnite. <laughs> I'm gonna add you, we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna smoke some noobs. That's right. <laughs> After Long Shan, we hit up the night market across the street as the smells of the food were just too damn delicious to pass, even with the impending storm on the way. And so for the next few hours, we just ate as much food and beer as we could, as we weren't sure how long it was gonna be until everyone had to close up shop for the night or when our next spicy barbecue eel fish was gonna be. This is like, this melts in your mouth. Yeah. And turns out it wasn't long before things got shut down and so we retreated to the safety of the hostel for a nightcap and a proper chat about what we should do to avoid this terrible weather that was potentially gonna ruin our trip. There's been a slight change of plan. Yeah, so... We were planning to stay in Taipei for four days. And as we mentioned, there was a, a typhoon. Well, it was supposed to hit Japan. It right? was supposed to hit or Japan. Or turn and hit, go that way, but it's yeah. changed but it's direction. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna change, it's gonna it change direction. And it's gonna stay around Taipei for a couple of days. And so, you just got a message, right? I got 118 messages. No way. <laughs> talking about this typhoon. So I don't work tomorrow, because the government's shutting everything down. Which basically means that I'm free for the night, but also I'm like, going to be locked in my room tomorrow for the typhoon. So yeah, he doesn't have to work tomorrow. We had a bunch of plans, but because of the typhoon, can't do those anymore, so... Luckily, we're right next to the train station. Yeah, we're right next to the Taipei main station. So tomorrow we're going to a, hop on a bullet train all the way south and just escape the typhoon. That's the plan. This is why you need to be flexible with your travel plans, guys. Are we going to die in the typhoon? Oh. Maybe. Oh. We might die. Oh. But it does mean that we can have one more beer before bed because right. we don't have to wake up super early. We'll just have one more. <laughs> one more. One more after the one I get next. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected, but super easy to get her uh, a ticket and we're on here now So we're gonna go right to the very south of the island and maximize our chances of having better weather And then maybe we'll try and work our way back up. We have no clue like we have nothing planned This is a good thing as well because we didn't pre-book any accommodation or pre-book any Activities, so we haven't really lost out on any planning. We've just Yeah, it's it's we're going into the south with no plan and it's quite, quite good fun. So um, thanks for watching this episode and uh, did you have a good time? Loved it. I will always come back to Taipei, favorite city in Asia. I agree, it's very, very, it's up there in my top five cities in the world. Um, honestly, really, really cool place. Um, but thank you for watching. Um, if you're new, make sure to subscribe to watch the rest of this mini series. We're gonna have lots more adventures here in Taiwan. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one, guys. Bye. Thanks again for watching and if you did enjoy this episode then please help and support us by giving us a like, subscribe to our channel and turn that bell on so you never miss an episode. You can also support this channel by picking up some Budgeteers merchandise. There are loads of awesome designs and some brand new product lines available including stickers now so make sure to head over and check them out. 
And if you've enjoyed the music in this episode, we use Epidemic Sound for all of our videos actually now. And you can get a 30 day free trial below to help level up your content, whatever that may be. 